Excitement was in the air this past December 16th at the Seminole campus of St. Petersburg College. As the Juvenile Welfare Board hosted its third annual Children's Summit. Nearly 200 key influencers and community leaders attended the event. JWB Vice Chair Brian Onks Jr. welcomed guests on behalf of the Board of Directors, then turned it over to Dr. Marcy Biddleman. Good morning. Good morning. Let me start by asking Dr. Law. Who invited the SPC President, Dr. William Law, to join her at the podium. Speaking on behalf of the college's Institute for Strategic Partnerships, venue host Dr. Law welcomes summit participants. Take care. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Dr. Biddleman then called for the lights to be dimmed as she introduced JWB's annual report video. A refreshing alternative to the usual printed annual report that featured JWB's investments and accomplishments for last fiscal year. Upon the conclusion of the video, Dr. Biddleman announced a fourth strategic focus area, Strengthening Community, which was recently adopted by the JWB Board. And as you saw, our fourth area, which is the community, uh, I cannot tell you how much I appreciate that our board recognized uh, and, and asked to have that put in and make sure that it was one of our focus areas. The primary focus area is the community. And so the addition of the fourth focus area validates work already being done at the community level by JWB and its partners and complements efforts across JWB's other three areas of focus, school readiness, school success, and the prevention of child abuse and neglect. The program then spotlighted two collective impact efforts at work in Pinellas County in which JWB had a seat at the table as it relates to the impact for children and their families. Serving as MC for this portion of the program, Susan Rolston, JWB Board Secretary, well, good morning. introduced the summit's distinguished speakers and their topic areas. The first was the Behavioral Health Continuum, featuring impassioned remarks by Florida Representative Kathleen Peters, who urged the crowd to take a stand. I believe the number one reason people will not see mental health is because of the stigma associated with it. And the only way we're going to eliminate that stigma is if we start talking about it. And we let people know who the, what the signs and symptoms are. Because people don't know. Parents don't know the signs and symptoms. The kids don't know the signs and symptoms because we're not talking about it. And even if we are, they don't want to get help because they want to deny it because they don't want to be associated with the stigma. So help me get rid of the stigma and start talking about it. It's the only way we'll get rid of it is if we start talking about it and help people understand and educate them and let people know what the signs and symptoms are. So thank you for letting me come. I appreciate it very much. Barbara. Suncoast Center CEO Barbara Dare also spoke about important behavioral challenges for families as she described steps underway to form a unified system for mental health services. Placing an exclamation point on the topic, Florida's DCF Secretary Mike Carroll shared stories from families from across the state and applauded local efforts to improve service delivery for those struggling with mental health and substance abuse issues. As Mrs. Rolston introduced the second topic, she noted that the seeds were actually planted during last year's Children's Summit, where local leaders learned of a successful collective impact effort called Alignment Nashville. The group was established to begin addressing our county's own persistent, pervasive, and plaguing problems, coining the name of their efforts, Unite Pinellas. Sharing their journey and next steps were the co-chairs of Unite Pinellas, Suzanne McCormick, United Way Sunco CEO, and Randy Russell, Foundation for a Healthy St. Petersburg CEO. I think we started with three or four folks and then um, continue to have on a monthly basis a couple of small meetings. We built the foundation for some really strong, stronger relationships and ongoing trust which as we move through this journey this year, uh, I, I can't underscore enough how important trust building has been 
um, because we have we have entered into some challenging conversations at time, and, and if we hadn't built trust, I'm not sure we, we would have gotten to the other side of those with the same outcome that we did. We are proud, we are excited about the future, and we know that we have but a foundation laid to now move to action. And I'm thrilled to now invite up my partner in crime right now, Randy Russell, to share with you how we hope to move from this foundation and passion to getting something really good done. Randy. We didn't get here without an evolution, and some of that evolution is painful and ugly. And that's why equity was picked as a centerpiece for the work. Because the reality is the vision for this with Dr. Bittleman originally and then as the group moved forward with others, this is not intended to be yet another blue ribbon committee of anything. It is intended to eradicate one of the enemies of equity, which are silos. So the, the potential is exceedingly high, the optimism is exceedingly high. There's a lot of folks in the room who are very invested in seeing where this goes. But as philanthropy often says, fail fast. So we want to see this do something, or we want to see something else take its place. Um, because this integration, many of us believe, is really, really important. So there's a certain energy to get something really specific launched in this regard in early 17. So stay tuned. Uh, keep us informed. If you have ideas, please communicate to any one of us and anybody else who is connected to United Pinellas. Uh, we appreciate Marcy giving us some time today to kind of update you on where we are, and please look for us in the future, because I really think this is part of the answer for transformation in our county. Thank you very much. Mr. Unks returned to the stage for brief closing remarks, acknowledging that it was a morning of enlightenment and education. A look back to JWB's successes last year, and a look ahead to the future, as JWB and its partners continue to work to strengthen the lives of children and their families. Uh, and again, on behalf of the Board of Directors, thank you for joining us and strengthening our community. God bless you and have a great weekend. Thank you.